In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the charging port on the iPad Mini 6. This one's a little bit chewed up. I will say the hardest bit about this repair is removing the screen without damaging it. And this screen has already been removed before I started the video. There is also another video on the channel on how to remove these screens safely. To remove the screen, you're going to need to get it nice and hot. And it's also been on a hot plate for the last five minutes. To begin removing the screen, I always use a suction cup and place it on the left hand edge and then begin sort of slowly peeling it back and add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol in the gap that's created. Once you've got a little bit of alcohol in there, you're gonna see that it's gonna start lifting a bit more. That's because it's softening the adhesive. And then you can get the plastic pick in there just to run it along those edges to separate the adhesive some more. Use the suction cup again to go further around and add isopropyl alcohol where you need it. And just be very careful around this button because there is a fragile flex cable for the touch ID. Keep working your way around and sort of peeling the screen away lifting it up from the chassis and using the pick to help you. Once we're into the screen, I'll show you where the flex cables are and which way to open it. Now that I've worked around the three edges, the last edge is usually the easiest because we can just wiggle the screen from side to side a little bit and it's gonna come away from the adhesive quite nicely. With the screen now separated, we can open it up just like opening a book from the front cover, but we're also pushing it that way a little bit because you can see the flex cables are sort of just off center at the bottom of the iPad. The suction cup acts as a really nice rest to stop it falling over as well, but I am going to remove it now because this one will lay flat on the desk just like that. Now that we're into the iPad, we need a small Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove these five crosshead screws holding down this shield. This is a much simpler charging port repair than older iPad models where you had to use soldering to remove it, whereas this one is all FPC connectors. Once the screws are removed, take your tweezers and lift the shield. Then we need to isolate power from the device, so take a plastic opening tool and disconnect the battery first. You can now disconnect the two screen connectors, which are these two here, and they'll spring back, allowing us to take the screen out of the way and keep it safely for reinstallation later. I'll just fold back that battery tab to make sure that it doesn't accidentally reconnect. And now we're gonna move on to the charging port. As you can see, this one is very simple. It's just one more connector, and then there's four screws that hold this guy down. Remove the two screws either side of the charging port itself, and they have these little brackets on there. Make sure you keep them safe as well. For the other two screws, we need to stand the iPad up on its bottom edge and then get the screwdriver in to get them out. With all those four screws removed, we can now just take the charging port out and you can see this one is quite badly damaged and explains why this one wasn't charging. I'll get the charging port out now and I'll try and remember to link this one in the description below. This one's just got a plastic film on the back with some adhesive tape to make sure it sticks down well. To install it, place it down in that gap where the charge port goes and then you need to bend the flex cable a little bit so that it lines up and clicks into place just like connecting a couple of pieces of Lego. Now we'll go ahead and re-secure those two screws that go in on the angle. Then we're going to get the two brackets and place them into the little slots. Make sure that they go the right way around. It can be confusing to line these up if you've never done it before. And then there's just those two screws that go either side of the charging port, securing it firmly into place. I'm not going to bang on too much about how to clean up the chassis and prepare the screen, but in short, you need to make sure that the edge of the chassis is super clean, as well as the back of the screen before applying some Tessa tape as opposed to some kind of glue, which will give the best seal that you possibly can. I am going to skip this step, but if you do want to see a video of how to prepare iPad screens ready for reinstallation, let me know in the comments below and I will work on something in the near future. Once the screen and chassis are prepared, then we're going to offer up the screen connectors and we're going to plug those into the FPC connectors that they go into. Then the other one. And then finally, we can reconnect the battery into there. We've got that shield to go on top now as well as the five crosshead screws. Good news about these is that they're all the same size, so there's no worry about muddling them up. 
So just go ahead and bang all five of those screws. At this point, you wanna go ahead and test that your charging port works now and that the iPad charges before you secure it down because there's nothing worse than finding out that your iPad won't charge after you've sealed it back up. For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna mess around showing you me charging it up and testing the device because that's not what you guys have come here for. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reseal this iPad by removing the backing sheet on the tester tape. And then finally, folding the screen back over. I always line it up in one corner first. So for this one, I've chose this bottom left corner. Then I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and tight along this bottom edge. And then if it is, the rest of the display will secure down nicely. And you don't have to clamp this because we've used tape. It's just ready to return to our customer. I am aware that the screen protector got some cracks in it, which is what we expect to happen when we use the suction cup on those. But it does the screen underneath it is fine. And then this one is now charging good. I'll give it a half an hour to turn back on. Thank you for watching and see you next time.